Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Out in Your Hamptons. I'm your host, Michael Jeffries, and today is a special show. Uh, it's really quite an honor for me to uh, have our special guest, the one and only Judy Sleed. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> now everybody will know that I'm famous. <laughs> she, she's famous. <laughs> of course, folks know Judy from many places. Uh, one of the uh, one of the places right here at LTV, uh, where you've had your show, uh, the play is the thing for twenty years. Right, yes, and many times I felt sorry that I chose such a long name <laughs> <laughs> when I had to fill out forms. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that's okay. Uh, it's stuck. The play is the thing. In fact, that's where I met you. Uh, geez, I think it was nineteen ninety eight. Uh, the last time we were together was uh, on your show, The Plays the Thing, on Springs Fireplace Road when the studio was over there. And folks, I think we have a clip from when I was on her show. Uh, hey, can you guys roll that tape for us? The body of Christ commands you. The body of Christ. <laughs> you brought down the house. <laughs> the body of the Christ yeah. compels you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking, but thank you yeah. for being a good sport about that. <laughs> that. Well, that was fantastic. I'm just so oh happy God. that uh, you did that because it was very unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Judy, oh my God, that was so fun. But I'm so glad we were able to uh, come on back here yes. at LTV. Um, I want to get into your story. Boy, there's so much to get into, you know, in our short time that we have. So let's just dive in. Um, I want to talk about one of your newest projects, I Am Judith, which is out now. It's been published. So if you haven't seen it, go online and uh, you, it's a must. it's a must watch. Deep, really yeah, deep. I yeah, had no yeah. idea that you're coming from uh, surviving the Holocaust. Barely, actually, barely surviving. Uh, oh, yes. it, what I got out of this was uh, that the slightest decision can alter the outcome of your life. Right. And it's a documentary that was done by Christian Arbesu. Yes. Yes. She Amazing took, director. Yes, she took it upon herself to do this movie. Yes, and let her, it won two awards, by the way. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. And it was premiered here last uh, November, not too long ago. Oh, yes, it was uh, here and a few other places in the Hamptons where they invited me, so they're after after showing it, there was a Q&A. So I'm still <coughs> busy talking about it. <laughs> How does that feel for you? Are you, you uh, surprised that you are as active creatively now? Yeah, it, uh, it feels good to be active because at my age, you feel like you have been forgotten. <laughs> I used to be very, very busy in my younger years. <laughs> Nobody can forget you, Judy. <laughs> you have uh, you have the bubbly personality of a twenty three year old. <laughs> oh. um, but on a more serious note, I mean, what was it like for you to really have to kind of like open up those locks and that door to that part of your life? What was such a horror? And then and well, share it, it with us. It took uh, a lot of years before I could talk about it because because it was painful. I mean, people kept telling me to write my life story. How did you survive? What happened? Blah blah blah. And then I just took notes, but I just I couldn't get it together to uh, to make like a, a book form. So uh, later years, I decided to write a play about it. 
which uh, is now called Daily Bob. Daily Bob, that's right. <laughs> Daily which Bob. translates to... Uh, um, Horizon or something like that. Yeah. And um, it's a, did it focus more on when you had uh, escaped uh, the city and you were living with other children? Yeah, this, my, my cousin Ava kept finding me. <laughs> and, uh, Thanks, Ava. <laughs> she put me up uh, in this home in Daly Bab, Utsa. Utsa is a street. Yeah. And uh, I was there with other children, survivors. And uh, <clears throat> the aim was to send us to Israel. Right. So they taught us how to speak Hebrew. And were you warm to that idea? What were you thinking? I, I, I imagine if it was me, I would just be one in a state of shock and, and yearning for my parents. And well, I didn't want to leave because I figured if my parents will come back, they won't find me. You had hope. Oh, well, I was hoping that uh, they're going to come back for years because I even heard that some people who survived the... Uh, those years, they sent them to Siberia. Oh. So I you thought held on to perhaps that. they went yeah. there. So, uh, <clears throat> but my cousin Ava said, don't worry, wherever you go, if they come back, I will tell them where to find you. Wow, she's like an a angel. Yes, she, as a matter of fact, uh, years, years later, she came to visit me here in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you, years or in your lifetime, I mean, you obviously were, had your own life to live and, and got very busy raising a family. Did you ever have a sense that your parents were looking over you? or? Well, it's not that they're looking over me, but any time like I made a major decision, I was like looking over my shoulder. Would my mother approve? Oh. Would she approve? Because she was very protective of me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I had that feeling for the longest time. But I, I never wanted to read about anything because I never even told my children uh, the story because... They said they knew in the film. They, they yes, knew, but, they but, knew, but not from me. <laughs> no. I mean, I can understand why you wouldn't want to dredge it all up. I mean, for yourself even, just, you know, you have to, you're busy with your children, your family. Yeah. You've got, you, want, you want to move forward and be prosperous and make yes, them happy. Yes, I thought I was shielding them. Yeah, I totally, um, I totally get that. My intentions were good. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But no, you know, maybe it wasn't the right time, and that now is, you know, to talk about it and to let other people know your experience. I mean, you know, you help other people as an artist when you share your story. And you, you, who knows how many folks you're touching? That's true. Yeah. I heard that from many people that uh, I'm their role model. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, in, in the film, you survived simply by finding an opportunity to, to, you know, quietly back out of a hole in the wall. If you didn't do that, God knows what would have happened to you. Yeah, well, actually, uh, there was this magazine, it's called Hidden Children, which I was a hidden child. She said that... Uh, <clears throat> Well, she print, printed my story in her magazine, and uh, she said if if I didn't escape, they sent the rest of the people to camps. So German camps, huh? German camps, like concentr yeah. concentration. Concentration. Camps. So the the odds of surviving those are. Yeah, I wouldn't have survived yeah. if I didn't just sneak out. It's of so there. crazy how you just, you know, I just. It's on an impulse. Impulse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you must have been so dramatized at that point because you lost your, your dad and your brother first, right? And then your yeah. mom. Yes. If your mom didn't decide to go to the report to the train station, what would have happened? Would they come I was after? Lately, just very recently, I was 
thinking about that. Why did she go? What would have happened if she didn't go? I, don't I was know. thinking about that too. Huh? I thought I was thinking about that. You know what? May, what about if she uh, she thought that uh, if she didn't go, she would have been breaking what the water was, and they would have. But she, maybe she's trying to protect you, like they would have come violently to the house or something. Yeah, maybe something like yeah. that. I think it was from a protection point of view, like a mothery, mothering kind of. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, I just think she was awfully honest. She. Uh, I don't think she trustworthy. ever believed that this is going to happen. She felt, she, she just couldn't believe that this is happening. So even today, <laughs> when I think about it, I, I feel a lot of pain. Because how they must have felt when they were in that impossible situation and they probably know there is no way out or maybe maybe they had hopes that something will liberate liberate them because it was so the end of the war it was pretty late right yeah yeah like what happened to us in in budapest it was less than a year because we were liberated uh in january or february of 45. Yeah. So it was like from March 44 to next year. Yeah. So uh, who were the closest relatives that survived? Uh, well, my cousin Ava. Yeah, that we're talking <laughs> she took, about. She took care of her mother. Yeah. And no one else, <clears throat> no one else that I know because uh, my daughter Jody took me back to Budapest about more than 10 years ago, and I didn't know anybody. Yeah. How did it feel to be back, literally back in the home? Oh, well, home country? I went back to my house where I grew up in, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, interesting thing was that when I was a child, you know, everything looked so big. And then as an adult, I went back, everything looked so small. That is so funny, <laughs> yes, so true. Did you go to your father's store? Was it still there, the building? Well, no. Actually, now that you mention it, my cousin Laurent uh, and I, we went back to the store, and it was stripped. There was nothing left there. Yeah. Did it? Did memories or emotions come to you at that moment, or? No, well, this was uh, his second store. The first store was uh, in a nice building, and then <clears throat> because he was Jewish, they had to move him to a lesser. Across the tracks, you say in the film. Across the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so um, degrading to do that to some to people. Yeah, but what stuck me when I went back to Budapest is all the cars because when I lived there as a child, there were no cars, or very few. Yeah. There was a trolley car in front of the building, and uh, it wasn't there anymore. Yeah. They had subways, and uh, it was a very different. <laughs> yeah. And so where did you raise your family? Uh, in Baldwin. Baldwin, Long Island? Yes. Not too far from here. And um, what was your husband's name? Joel. Oh, the Jays. The Jay yeah, family. Oh, the yeah, all the five Jays. Yeah, Jays. and he was a news. He worked for the Long Island Press. Oh, nice. As a reporter. Yeah. And then he had a travel column, which is uh, was very good because he took me with him to most exotic places when he was invited. And of course, we, People showed him the best of time because they wanted him to uh, write well. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the way it works, yes. <laughs> yeah. So they took, they treated us like royalty. Yeah. Nice. So I had a good time. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did, did he pass away recently or? Well, I got divorced. Oh, you 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 got you had a good time and then you got tired. Yes, of him. yes, yes. And he else? He did pass away. Uh, <laughs> About eight years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we were already 
divorce. Did you remain friends or um, well, in contact? Well, I was pretty angry with him, and oh. I said to him, I don't want anything from you, no alimony, just be good to the kids. Yeah. So he did that, but so I was on my own ever since. Okay. <laughs> did you did you have uh, friends, or did you remarry? Or? Yeah. No, I never, you know, <laughs> that's another thing I didn't want to <laughs> It's know. like, uh, Mike, uh, the personal questions here, come on now. <laughs> no, no, the thing is, I, I didn't want my children, because I lived for my children. Inter that, you know, that's interesting that you would and, set, uh, you know. Go ahead. I didn't want my children to think that I'm getting somebody better than their father. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> I want them to think well of him and love him and love me. And any time they needed me, I was there. As I said, I lived yeah. for them. It sounds like you were a really good mother, like, there for them. Um, who, who would you say um, taught you those kind of skills, like, to the mother successfully, <laughs> was it Ava or um, no? So maybe no, you just had just it in you, compassion, yeah. yeah, and the empathy and all that from your and partly from your experience. Even the even the things that I have written, it came so easy to me. It, uh, I just got inspired at any time, <laughs> and even when I was driving, I had a pencil and paper, and when I came to a stop, I started writing. It just came out of me, all these things that I have written. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Now, I, I know that you wrote How I Met You, Oh, Gregory was one. Yes, it's a very funny play, yeah. I have to say myself. It, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had two readings of it, and it's uploaded on YouTube. Yeah. And I just happened to watch it the other day because I forgot who was in it, so I just wanted to see who was in it, and then I just couldn't tear myself away. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, folks? Go and watch that today, and if somebody wants to uh, uh, resurrect it, reproduce it, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Judy's game, right? <laughs> And Why then, not? And then the other play is called Georgie Day, which is a, a musical, and it's about Hungarians coming to America, and uh, <clears throat> it deals with two generations. The generation, the older generation, they want to go back to Hungary, and the newer generation, they want to stay in America. So it's a nice songs. I compose a lot of songs in it, and it's it's also a fun play. That's why you play piano. Oh, the piano. Is that how you write music on the piano? Or on, yes, yeah. yes, I and I had written out all the songs also. In those days, I knew how to do that. <laughs> I don't think I would remember. Uh, can we, uh, is there a place we can listen to some of your music? Like on yes. I iTunes or? Yes, I <laughs> I could play some some of the songs when I have the music in front of me. Oh yeah, <laughs> have you recorded anything that you've put out, published anywhere? Or? Well, um, part of it. It's on YouTube. Only the first few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Steven Spataro has been very helpful. He's the the. <coughs> He does the adult reference at the library here in East Hampton, and he's the one who's been uploading my my program yeah. on YouTube. Nice. And he does other. He's very nice to me, and he's very talented. Judy Sleet is working in all genres, folks. Uh, <laughs> and, and if you don't believe me, let me just show you. Uh, it doesn't stop at plays. <laughs> And uh, films about surviving the Holocaust. She has something for the children as well. <laughs> oh, and this yes. is like a total turn for you. I love it. The fight of the crayons. That is. Do tell. <laughs> you could buy it on uh, Amazon, by the way. I saw it on Amazon. You did. <laughs> yeah. It has very positive reviews. Uh, so it's it's a story and a coloring book is what I got out of that. It uh, is. Yeah. It is interactive. 
Yes, I have also <clears throat> converted that into a play, and a couple of schools have produced it. Ah, oh, that's exciting. And it's, a, it's like a family uh, project because the parents built the uh, scenery out of cardboard. And of course, the children played the parts. And but as you you could read it, and uh, it uh, it it just tells you that no matter who you are, you're not important by yourself. You need other people to be happy. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice story. Yeah. Yes. So true. That rings true. Yeah. Yes. Individual colors together, though it's a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a little spin on that. <laughs> um, oh, the play is the thing. Twenty years now. It's been twenty yes. years. That's what probably the longest show at LTV. And come to think of it, uh, Michael, what's his name? The CEO. Clark. You've Clark. interviewed him when he was a young man. I saw that one. Yes, yeah. When he <laughs> Hi, Mike. Music, so. <laughs> he said he's going to uh, do a special show to commemorate my anniversary on there. Yeah. I don't know if he forgot about it or because I asked him if I need to be there. He said no. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure it's coming up just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to see it. Yes. It's like an ensemble of your greatest interviews or something like yes. that. Yes. 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 They should do that because you really, you were here when LTV was on Springs Fireplace Road. Now look at us. Yeah. Look Amazing. At it. Yeah. Billy Jett was the CEO when I first came here. Yeah. Yes. And in the film, uh, you did mention that you wanted to really dive into the cre creative arts when you moved out here. And, yes. Uh, that must have been, when you were raising your children, did you have that creative fire then? Mm -mm. Well, maybe I did. Yeah, I used to, uh, yeah, I when <clears throat> the children got older and I had more time, I joined uh, <coughs> local theater companies. One was called The Lantern, and there was other... And I used to do PTA. They used to, they used to have a, uh, what they call the covered dish supper, where all the ladies would cook something and bring it to the event. And we used to go on stage and do a show. And uh, guess who volunteered to do the show? <laughs> this is the coolest mo mom of the year award. <laughs> Yes, and that was a, a lot of fun. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, that if I would have thought of it before, I probably could tell you what I did, but I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> You're on the spot. <laughs> yes. Uh, but that's okay. Are you still producing episodes of uh, The Play is the I Thing? I haven't. Uh, well, I just invited some uh, guests, of some people showed an interest. Some people don't like it. Some, and I said, okay, just if you don't want, just say no instead of say yes, and then you keep telling me not today. Mm -hmm. I said, I understand that, no. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but some people showed an interest, and I have uh, a couple of uh, interviews coming up next, next week. Next or, week, awesome. On yeah. the, I think it's at 22nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my last guest was uh, Russell Blue. He's an architect. Oh, nice. Out here. Yeah. Yes, and his son is Dylan Blue, who's an actor. He was a child actor. Uh, nice name, Dylan Blue. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm very friends with her the mother of Dylan and the wife of uh, Russell, yeah. Sarah. And uh, I also interviewed uh, Christiane Arbizu. Yes, let's just reiterate 
the documentary is I Am Jews, yes. directed by Christian. Christian. Yeah. And it's a must-see, folks. Amazing, amazing, deep, serious, but inspiring in a way. Up, like, uh, insp um, you're inspiring, your survival story and how you prospered is, is well, inspiring. Well, actually, Bob Costas liked it and took an interest in it, and she's, he, but you know who Bob Costas is. I think everybody does. Yeah. My son used to work for him, and uh, <coughs> he and Christian is, uh, they are, it, excuse me. Oh, there's some water here. <coughs> they are water. in touch, and they're going to. So, salute to you. Cheers. Oh, salute. <laughs> <laughs> happens to me when I talk a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm making you talk a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so this is very interesting that I'm on, on the other side of the... <laughs> I was thinking about that. And in fact, we're wrapping up in 18 seconds. Uh, oh. Folks, go check out uh, Judy's repertoire on YouTube. Yes. Um, or just contact her. She'd love to have you on her show if you're into the arts and creating, creating something special for us. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes, I'm still hoping to put uh, Daily Bab on stage, and I'm trying to put it in schools. And, of course, the crayon story also is, uh, uh, it's a fun thing to do for children putting on a play. Absolutely. And as I said, it's a family project because the parents can be involved building the sets out of cardboard. Oh, I love it. So folks, uh, that's a wrap for Out in the Hamptons today. She's still going strong in your 90s now. Congratulations. Yeah. The one and only Judy Sleeve, folks. <laughs> Bye. Come on.